Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring and as the title of this video suggests, today I will be telling you more about selling my dream car and buying something else, the other dream of mine. Now a quick recap, last year I bought E34 M5, something that I wanted ever since I was a kid and it was the very first car that I ever drove when I was five years old, sitting on my uncle's lap who had one and long story, short at the end of the year the car almost caught fire then we put it away we wanted to rebuild it etc 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 and then fast forward to somewhere january a fella called 40 collection bought robert's e92 m3 and then he said like hey wouldn't you mind selling also maybe your m5 and i said like well if the price is right why not there may, I could may name you many, many different reasons why I could, all kinds of excuses, like it, uh, it would take me too long to rebuild it, or etc., or I was lazy, or I would like to have something else, or, 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 long story short, the price was right, and I needed money for something. That's it, that is all you need to know. Let's go. You know, when you're like selling a car, quite often you hear stories of people giving them the last look and realizing that oh no i made the wrong decision i did something bad and you know i don't want to do it can we please cancel the deal or my heart is gonna break now that i'm driving away and seeing it being on the trailer but in my case i'm actually i'm absolutely confident i made the right decision like i cannot wait to do things to like I don't know, well, let's say it's flat out to actually invest the money in the things that I'm going to do uh, that I got from this car. So yeah, let's kick things off. So which dream did I buy with selling E34 M5? I always wanted to have a caddy. Yeah, but that caddy came with a good filmmaker. And that, Hello. that also needed a bit of financing. Yes. But actually, most importantly, all of that all of our camera gear that you have seen us put through use and yeah make great videos such as the 24 hour documentary and a lot more so we're going to walk you through the cost of filmmaking we're going to mention every single piece of equipment that we have and how much it costs and i think it's going to blow you away because it definitely does me and it makes me cry because i could have bought a fancy sports car i could have made a down payment on a house it is actually quite crazy and actually the money that i got from selling an e34 m5 with the weird history and the bad condition probably like it financed only 10 like no i would say like 15 percent of everything that you see here maybe 20 but uh let's get started i think so adrian our biggest investment was yes the camera itself which is sony fx6 the professional Sony camera and that costed us let me we had to go all the way to Czech Republic for that oh yes that to, was to actually the because, be, be, because they were sold out everywhere I don't know what, what the situation is right now but you still need to, to wait for like a few months or a few weeks to, to, yeah. to buy it but this body alone is 7360 euros this piece this piece alone yes then in addition comes the lens that we have attached to it so that's a 2470, right? Yes, 2.8. This is the newer version. No, this is the, old the older version yeah. because now the Mark II yeah, is like released. Yeah, like one month ago it released the new, newer version, but it's still really good lens, really sharp. So I really like to use it. Mm -hmm. So that was 1800 euros, the lens alone. Yep. Uh, then on top you have a mic. Yes, actually. exactly. Rode that's one Video of... Mic Pro. But that's yours, actually. You had yeah. it already before. It's around also 200 euros or so, 170, 180. 150, I think. I mean, yeah. it was. I don't know how the inflation yeah. works yeah. right now, but on top we have a screen. Yes, uh, Atomos Shinobi. We've got two of them. Uh, it's five-inch monitor, really bright. It's not a recorder. It's it's a monitor itself. 369 euros. Yes. Times two, because one for you, one for me that I used once. One there. I used it once. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the cage. Uh, yes, cage is uh, there. With and rods separately? Yes, rods separately, with the handle separately, with the... Uh, here we've got the mount for the... Uh, the receiver. The, yeah, there, the, the receiver. I mean, this is for the transmitter. Mm -hmm. We are sliding it uh, there, and you've got it surely mounted on the, onto the camera. Mm -hmm. 
and it's fly not flying anywhere. So the cage was 301 euro. Yes. And then the rods, let me see if I can find them. The, the, uh, 17 euros, also important to mention. Yep. 17 Each euros. or for, for a I think for both. Okay. I hope for both. <laughs> I hope, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is about the camera? You, we also had the, to buy a few uh, accumulators, few batteries. Which were quite expensive. Yes. Because one original Sony BP U70 battery was 316 euros. This one. Then in addition, we had a couple of more of them, 205 for the smaller ones. Yeah. Yeah. Then the screen batteries as well. Mm -hmm. We've got like, what, seven or eight of them? Which were oh, 10 euros a piece. That's actually not too bad. Yeah, but they are universal, so we can power it on the screen. Uh, you can also power it on the video transmission, we've, which we've got there. And lots of, lots of accessories that Okay, let's talk now a bit more other expensive stuff. So let's go over the lenses. Oh yeah. The 7200. I love it. This is my first favorite lens. Yes, the 7200 with stabilization with uh, 2.8. And yeah, I love it. It's it's really great really great uh, lens. Mm -hmm. So the lens itself, it's a telephoto lens, so you can do lots of zooming action, especially when you're standing trackside at oh, the yes. barriers. And that is what it's primarily used for. 3,000 euros for this bad boy. And that's the lens alone. Then, as I mentioned, we have lots of filters. Uh, we'll probably go over them later on because then we can just like add all the, all the prices together. Mm -hmm. Then here, this is probably the most useless piece of an expensive piece of equipment that I have bought. So right now I'm filming on the A7S III a camera combined paired with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens. So we're gonna go over pricing in a bit. But I bought this one after seeing reviews and what the camera or what this lens can do, 12 to 24 wide angle lens. And that costed also close to uh, 3000 euro. Let me see, it was, yeah, it was exactly 3000 euros but Crazy. never ended up using it because it's a lot heavier. You cannot put filters on it unless you work with some external adapters. So actually, as of now, I would like to sell it. So if you want to buy it, then maybe yeah, contact us. I uh, want to have slightly less than 3000 for it because I used it literally, I think, once for one video. So right now we're filming on 16 mil. So this is like, this is zoomed in. This is 16 mil. I think we can do a quick swap to show you what 12 mil will do. We mounted the lens, it is now showing you 60 millimeters, and now it's 12 mil. So as you can see, lots of wide angle. It's primarily used by people who want to photograph or film real estate, because as you can see, indoor environment gets like from 16 mil, you get like lots of, you can show the place in its epic glory. Look at the M2, look at the caddy, especially close up. And the reason why I bought this actually, is that I was thinking of doing like POV videos, but you would need to have a helmet mount to actually uh, do the uh, cameras. And yeah, it might become a bit too overcomplicated, but that's like not the most complicated thing that we will see later in the video. Now we dismounted the 60 mil lens that I primarily use for the vlogging. And that is, I think 2,300 euros. Yeah, 2,300 euros for this one. And now we swapped cameras because of course I'm recording on A7S III and the camera itself costs 4,199 euros. On top, you see the microphone, which completely changed the perception of the videos because in the past I used to film on my phone, something I will get back to later. But with the mic, audio is always more important than the video itself. The mic alone was also 379 euros, but it does really, really good job when it comes to noise cancelling and having picking up all the ambient sounds. So that's a very good investment. I'm holding the Joby Gorilla Pot to use it as the mount to, to actually well, as a handle. And that was also 139 euros. In addition, later on, we will also go over all the batteries that we have and all the SD cards. But that alone in my hand is already like close to 7000 euros. So that's yeah more than half of the M5. This is when it comes to the vlogging equipment and track side for the cinematography, but we also have things that allow us to shoot from in the air. And let's start with actually, uh, I would say another useless purchase because I had the amazing idea to create FPV videos. So we bought a DJI FPV, which was over a thousand euro. We only unpacked it and we never used it 
any single time. It's not even powered on, never. It's, no. It's, it's brand new, only the foil is taking off from Exactly. The and I actually would say that I would like to sell it as well because I don't see us using it in any foreseeable future because the main difference is with bigger drones, you need to run insurance, you need to have license, which we, by the way, have for this. But since we haven't used it and I don't see us using it in any time soon, uh, it's just like a kind of sunk cost at this point. So better if someone would like to buy it slightly less than the new price, reach out to us and we'll happily sell it to you, including the DJI FPV Care and the propeller protection and more. These are never opened. So never opened, yeah, yeah, as you can see. Now, in addition, speaking of the drones, something that we do use is the Mini 2. Yes. This one we bought for 650 euros, I believe, and before we went to Sweden to film the Polestar video, and did very well, the DJI Mini 2, amazing drone for something that you don't need a license because it's under 250 grams. The fact is, it does great. I mean, you can of course use a helicopter if, if there's a VLN race happening. Somewhere helicopters are out there, but it's currently being overexposed. I love the size of it, by the way. It, it's literally smaller than my phone. Yes. And it's, it does a really good job. Yeah. The thing is, right now, the Mini 3 is out so with some better specification. And I've decided to sell this one for like 350 euros. Right now, they even became more expensive than they were before due to the inflation. So you get for half the price, you can have a nice drone. So reach out to us if you like those, because I want to buy the Mini 3 for our use. And it's a combo pack. So we've got also two spare batteries. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay, while we're talking about DJI stuff, uh, we can talk about the DJI Ronin, is it RS2 that we have? RS2, yeah. And that we used only once. Yes. So it's a RS1. <laughs> <laughs> RS1. <laughs> RS1, indeed. So the, um, the gimbal itself costed, let me see, the Pro Combo was 859 euros for that but in addition we have also the focus system which was 155 euros yes, never used <laughs> never used wherever the expansion base kit uh it was the 399 euros yeah it's necessary to use it with our uh, car car mount that we also only use once we'll get to that in a bit but the whole dgi pack as well like extension kit 399 as mentioned the variable grip that one over there was 126 euros. Uh, the battery grip was another 97. It's another like two and a half or something thousand euros of the, yeah, of the gimbal that we haven't found any use for now. We had so many ambitions, but we ended up making only vlogs. Yeah, because when we make a cinematography video of a 24 hour race, no one seems to watch it. Hmm. So moving on to this amazing piece of equipment, the Tiltra. <laughs> Delta Hydra Alien car mount. Yes, which is uh, here we've got only suction cup and the, and the arms, I would say. Mm -hmm. And there was a damper and we had to modify it because the, this part is only which, uh, which you can find in the box. Mm -hmm. And it's quite too stiff for the lightweight camera that we have. So I also had my previous car mount. So I just connected it. Of course, the zip ties are just too secure. It's not the main yeah. thing that holds it up. But uh, yeah, you can see that it's now it's much better, more, more flexible. And better, yeah, but better stabilization. Yeah. 2,273 euros for this. Ouch. Yes, used only once because after we used it, we found out that it's actually illegal to use it in Germany on public roads. And we had a great idea to shoot some promotional video for a GT2R SMR with it until it crashed. So we will keep it. I'm not intending on selling it because I definitely want to make some uh, track focused videos with it once uh, we'll have appropriate subject for that. Of course, if you have something you would like to make some car to car shoots shots on the track or closed roads, reach out to us and we can make it happen because the footage that we did shoot with it, I think looked quite well that you've seen right now as a B-roll. Um, I think that's when it comes to the big investments, right? Yeah, I mostly. Think yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, everything was. I think so everything so mentioned, but there's a lot more. It's not only um, yeah, not only that because all the small stuff actually really adds up. So maybe you can hold the camera for now and let me just see. So as mentioned, we have lots of batteries. We went over all the DJI stuff. 
we have the cables, like a small rig cable for the HDMI, 22 euros each. We have, uh, oh, the wetsuit. We didn't mention oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the wetsuit for the FX6 to do some rain stuff. You know how uh, crazy last year we had the, the most rainy season at the Nürburgring, inc uh, including the floods. So I thought we definitely need to have that. And actually, so far, it's been almost sunny pretty much. Yeah, I used it twice, I think. And it wasn't necessary. I just wanted, wanted to use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 200 euros for a protection. Very expensive condom hmm, for your camera. Um, then batteries for A7S3 that I'm running, 62. Yeah, 63 euros each. We have five of them. Uh, the SD cards that are in A7 right now. Whoo! Uh, 338 euros, the SD card. Yeah, Manfrotto suction cup. Where is it? Here. Used it once when we showed the M3, when we picked up the M3 from KW, but it's, it's good usable. We just need to do it more, more often. Uh, but that alone was... 99 euros. And yes. only for a suction cup, so this part, the head Not was, the top. Yeah, the top was also like, also 99 euros. The cage, 65 euros. So this part over here, those are the, the HDMI cables that we talked about previously. Small rig screen mount uh, was 27, so that part alone. Uh, XLR adapter for FX6, did we ever use it? Yeah, I'm still using it, it's oh. there. 10 euros. We've got two of them. Yeah, 10 euros, that's okay. Charger for A7S3, additional charger. I think it's similar. Yeah, this is something move, this like move that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it was only 14 euros. Ooh, not too bad. Ah, something that many people hated, a filter. The, like the, the cinematic thing that makes it look everything like dusty and, uh, and oily, something that we ran in the beginning. Let's, but call, was, it, let's call it dreamy. <laughs> yeah, okay, Hundred, dreamy. 103 euros for the filter. Oh. Now comes a very fun one. So, as you can see, we're running mics on our cells, but these are the Rode SmartLav Plus combined with the Zoom H1 and recorder that we have been using, well, I have been using for like five years or maybe even more, and before that other versions. And we thought for this year, we're gonna go professional, wireless, Rode Wireless Go 2 with some extra mics. Turned out that it doesn't work in our cache. Cache. These things, so that alone was, so the wireless go is 269 euros and then the actual microphones, the lav mics that you can see attached to it, like no, not these things, but the cable and the mic that you would uh, have to not have uh, running just this thing clipped on a person. 218 euros, well, for two of them. So uh, one of each is like one is 109 euro. So, 500 euros worth of not usable thing. Backpack, because I was thinking, oh, we're gonna be traveling the world and putting all of our equipment in there. How much did we spend for that? 199 euros for the backpack. No, if we do go somewhere, it is definitely very cool, very good. So as of now, I think uh, we have already uh, over 30,000 euro worth of equipment that I bought for this year. Now, in addition, I'm reading from my phone and in the past and still sometimes I'm filming fragments with my phone. The phone itself was 1600 euros, then the smartwatch that came with it was another like 200 or 300 and some, some other things. Uh, I don't need a smartwatch to, for vlogging and filming, but I, I consider this to be like a working business equipment. In addition, what I do most at the Nürburgring, doing laps, the year ticket for Nürburgring costs 2200 euros, so I consider this part of the filming investment. So that brings us already close to 35,000 euros. Now that's again, only the stuff we, that we bought for to use this year. Now, most of the stuff we already had as well with our experience. So for example, going back here, most of the videos and all the onboards are being shot. It's actually here in this bag. We have all kinds of GoPros. We have here now the seven and, uh, and eight, we have nine, and over here comes the medium mod and 10. So this is what I usually use for the outside filming uh, with additional ND filter on top of it, inside filming, then the speedometer cam, and last time I used also the feed cam. When they come out, they usually between four to 500 euro, and I have every single GoPro starting from GoPro four black. So four black, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, uh, lots of them. 
uh, these things to stick on the speedometer on the dashboard so you can see the speed that I'm doing, they cost, so these are all we have here, the addition of that, uh, they are I think 30 euros per, uh, per six and I can use one per day because then the glue is not that sticky anymore like this, it collects just dust and then you can just throw it away. Uh, all kinds of extra mounts, media mods and whatnot, uh, additional batteries and funnily enough batteries cost less than these mounts but they're like made from 3M so probably GoPro wants to have some extra, uh, has to pay extra on that. So again lots of batteries for the GoPro. So I think we have a couple of thousand euro definitely worth of GoPro equipment. Of course over the years uh, but it's still interesting to mention. Now with uh, with all the formats that we use in filming, um, because I shoot 100 megabits per second, 50 FPS, uh, 25, no, yeah, 50 FPS. 10 bits, it's Th also quite 10 big. 10 bits, uh, it's quite big. Uh, Adrian, what do you use for shooting mostly? 100? And 50 uh, frames per second and 200 FPS to for slow, slow motion. motion. Yeah. So it is quite big. So storage, ever since I started filming, everything that I filmed, every single video I have on a hard drive. Now in the past when I was filming with my phone again, I could fill up half a year to sometimes maybe even nine months and if I would do occasionally one onboard per the day or even per week, six months definitely would fit on one hard drive of um, which is uh, five terabytes. Yes, as of now, now that we switch to this like big cameras and big production and sometimes I film up to 10 on boards with four different cameras per car. Uh, you can see that this contains roughly one month and two days more of footage. 200 euros per hard drive per month that we're now spending as well on top. Calculate in addition also like the, all the subscription fees for Photoshop, uh, DaVinci Resolve is only one-time payment in comparison to Premiere Pro, which is a piece of shit software that we like. I love DaVinci. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I swap it because I was using the Premiere and now I Yes, guess. so I think that's the best thing that happened to Adrian when he decided to come and work uh, with me, that, that I introduced him to the world of DaVinci Pro. And I enjoy my life again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, maybe we can also mention that we've got also light. Oh uh, yeah, for sure, all that of your the, equipment. Yeah. Lightsabers, the stop the box, the one of the main, main light is there. So just briefly, quickly, let's do, unpack it. That's the main, main light. For the studios? Yes, for interviews or something. And How much was that? Ooh, 500 euros. Mm -hmm. Here we've got... Uh, ah, the lightsaber. Yeah, the lightsaber, which is also like a really handy to use it because you can put it everywhere. It's a battery powered, so you don't have to like plug it in. Every, There's every more time. protection around it than the actual saber. Nice. And it's RGB, so we can change the color, the temperature, everything. And uh, what else? Yeah, the video transmission, wireless video transmission, if you want to go for the, uh, to mount the camera on the, on the car mount. On the car, yeah. And we actually need to see what, what are we doing. We have uh, this big boy, which is really good. It has like really good range and, uh, and the quality of, of the, of the mm -hmm. transmission. So it was quite expensive. It was like 2,000 two, two euros, I think. Oh, wow. Yes, it was, it was quite wow. expensive. Yeah, and then of course we have also like all the editing equipment. Like here you have the iMac. No, no, where is it? Air, what, wait, I'm MacBook. not the Apple guy. MacBook. MacBook Air go. with an M1 chip, so. Yeah. And we've got also three of these, uh, these uh, SD cards, two are in the FX6. Oh yeah. And right. one, uh, this really fast, what fast? The super fast card that you asked me to buy to uh, film super slow motion with the FX6, which was, I think, yeah, as mentioned, 369 euros or something. Yes. I uh, think it was close to even four or four and a half. How, yeah, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite expensive. And then, crazy expensive. And then a firmware update came for the uh, camera and it allowed it to record on the normal cameras, on, on normal SD cards as well. So that was kind of a waste of Let's money. Let's call it normal, because it's, it's, it's it has to also be They're really fast They're still expensive. SD, yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of this, of course, I didn't mention like the rig that I'm using, also using for sim racing, it was also like 15,000 euros. So lots and lots of things that we can talk about, but at the end, as mentioned, we're all doing it for fun. 
We forgot to mention, by the way, this fancy vintage lens that we used to shoot the 2002 video, the electric one. Yes, yes. We can say that the lens itself, which is only there, was for free because I've got it from my grandpa. But uh, the adapter, which is Metabons EF mount to E mount, uh, was like 500 euros. Wow. So it's also quite expensive, but it transmits every, every electric aspect, like autofocus and, and the aperture. So we'd have to, don't worry, like for, for lack of something in your lens. Mm -hmm. And what else? Yeah, we've got the Sennheisers. Oh, yeah. More mics, SS yeah. more SSDs, lots of other things that I think don't want to think about. All the food shots. And then, of course, the big case, which I've got lots of cables in there. Uh, we, lots of cables that we don't need every day, but when we are going somewhere oh, for yeah. an external project, I want to have everything with me, so I got like some additional sockets. We should mention the blankets or yes. <laughs> sound recording studio. Yes, we've, we, we've made the sound recordings last time and we, we used the uh, light stand with the, with the blankets to eliminate the echo. And it uh, works very mounted, nicely. Yeah, to mount, to mount it, I have also like... Uh, All the mounts. Yeah, mounts, tapes, everything. So yeah. I'm trying to not be surprised about anything, but of course, yeah. you cannot like, uh, know anything, everything before, before the shit, but I'm, I'm trying to be super, uh, prepared. Prepared, that's good. Yeah, we forgot to mention that. Your backpack as well. Yeah, okay, we can go on and go on and on, but I think then I'll be like, you know what, let's sell everything and let's just live lives like normal humans and I'll just continue recording with my phone and GoPro videos because the most successful video on my channel was shot just on the GoPro and that's all you need. So. Honestly, a very important point. I do it and I bought all this equipment because I, I do want to provide quality. In addition, not only for the channel, because we started filming also lots of external projects. We did the Porsche Sports Endurance Cup. We did a couple of hidden projects that we are not allowed to talk about yet. We filmed, for example, for Mantai, something that we probably have seen and hopefully a lot more to come. But again, to be successful on YouTube or to share your passion you honestly just need your phone, something that I used in the past and still using M right now or just one simple GoPro. So if you want to get into filmmaking or into YouTubing and you're like a young, passionate individual, don't think that you need to have all of this. Honestly, simple mobile phone because... Yes, that's true. The beginning of YouTube over a decade ago, people were filming with their webcams which had like 360p if they were lucky or 144p like the old the numa numa fat guy that was filmed in the most horrible quality but that's what people watch so again don't get discouraged that's all you need but uh, sometimes yeah you know boys will be boys but the price of their toys become bigger and this is the type of toys that we like to play with and uh, combining with cars okay if you pulled through this video, which is over half an hour long at this point, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and yeah, I think I said everything I needed to say. And uh, on to many more cool projects. And obviously, reach out to us if you want to buy some of the, like the lens and the, uh, the drone, etc. So yeah, there or is. Or if you want to have make a... us, make, make something with us. Yeah, for sure. That, that Feel as free well. to ask Misha. Yeah, or Adrian. Oh, me, yeah. Yeah, we take payment in food sometimes. <laughs> Honestly, actually, when people say, like, oh, can I buy the track shots that I saw in your video of my car? Buy us food, we can have it. <laughs> and as a bonus, extra dog content because there can never be enough dog content. No, just kidding. Actually, in the meanwhile, the Mavic 2 Mini has been sold and we already bought Mavic 3 Mini Pro. And we actually shot already some stuff with it, which you will see in one of the upcoming videos. And maybe later we will have some final shot of the castle. But some first impressions. It's really good. I think it's more stable than the previous one. And the battery lifetime is, is, is much longer. And of course the new remote with the screen is much better than connecting your smartphone every time you want to use it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so far so good. Yeah, nice. Well, that's now really it. So enjoy the outro with the Mavic Mini 3 Pro. Mm -hmm.